My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica, coming to you from San Francisco. Other people make friends. I'm just trying to make a little money. My job is not just to entertain, but to explain. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC. Tweet me at Jim Kramer. There really are two economies in this country. There's the one that needs lower interest rates because business is slowing and it's harder to find a job. And then there's the one that says we don't really care about where the stinking rates are. That's how we can get a double rate cut today and still go lower. And then surprisingly see the Dow dipping 103 points, S&P declining 0.29 percent, and the Nasdaq shedding 0.31 percent. All aboard! We're out here in San Silicon Valley where the stinking rates don't matter. So nobody cared about today's half-point rate cut, even if you think they should. If you bring up the Fed here, they look at you like you're some sort of clueless dinosaur headed for extinction. Well, T-Rex Kramer has this to say. The part of the economy that needs the Fed to go big got its wish today. It didn't matter as much to Wall Street, but that's not because lower rates don't matter. It's because for these kinds of stocks... Well, we saw it all coming. Last week, the Fed started leaking that it might give us a 50 basis point cut now that we've finally gotten a handle on inflation. So the double rate cut was already baked in. We rallied on this news last week. We're not going to do it a second time. That's not how it works. So don't read too much in today's action or any one day's action. There are so many companies I talk to that truly worry about the economy that say they can't make their forecast because rates are too high. <laughs> We've been hearing that from most of the retailers, some of the restaurants, especially the ones that cater to the less well-off. They needed this double rate cut, believe me. Oh, it is great for housing, and it can help the industrials. Those stocks ran in anticipation. They sold off when we got what we wanted, too. That is very typical action. But how about the tech economy, the one that's based out here where we are right now? Look, when you're talking to companies in Silicon Valley, it almost feels like the people who run these companies they're like inmates who escaped from the asylum of interest rates years ago. What they do is, ex is exploit holes that allow them to become integral to the enterprise. See, they don't really care about you, about the consumer. They're selling to businesses that then sell to you. So their total addressable market doesn't hinge on interest rates. It hinges on how innovative they are. That's the story you've heard from all the companies we've interviewed. These are companies about innovation. You see, these tech companies, they're not selling homes. They aren't selling wash machines or cars or steel or plastic or things worth less than a dollar that are sold for more than a dollar at a dollar store. Housing, of course, needs lower mortgage rates to get sales going. Tech doesn't care about mortgage rates. They just want to create some software that reduces some of the friction that, they, that you get in the process of buying a home. Lower rates make it more likely that people start new companies, but most new companies are too small to need major enterprise software companies that we talk to, so small cap companies can go up as they did, but big enterprise software, not so much. The Fed wanted to be sure that inflation is contained and going in the right direction, which then did allow them to relent and cut by 50 basis points. Now more businesses in the East in particular can thrive. But out here, the presumption is that all enterprises are trying to raise margins, often by automating everything that can be automated, which only means using fewer people. These tech companies are automators. They never want to be hostage to the Fed. They don't want you to be hostage to the Fed because that would be a sign of weakness. It would be a sign of cyclicality. Oh, they hate cyclicality. Why be hostage to the business cycle if you don't have to? The thing is, these tech stocks tend to be winners when the Fed keeps rates high and the economy slowing. But when the Fed slams on the accelerator, as it started to do today, Wall Street abandons this group and piles into the companies that can post big earnings gains with much lower interest rates. Now, that may all sound strange to you. Obviously, the real world makes no distinction between a company that does well all the time and a company that does extremely well some of the time. However, in the crazy world of the stock market, we only have so much cash to go around. And right now, it's flowing into companies that would have been doomed in a world where the Fed didn't start cutting rates. These companies have stocks that are much prized right now. So the money funnels into them. Everything else went up but couldn't stay up after the rate cut. These did stay up. Unfortunately, there are not enough of them to allow the averages to close in the black. That's what we close in the red. So in er is, every player, is every player doomed to the same small part? Are the stocks of all tech companies weaker now? Can nothing transcend big part status? Like when I went out for Bye Bye Birdie or Guys and Dolls in high school, I mean, first, no publicly traded company would ever be that low as I was. I was totally expendable. Other than Arsenal Lace when I played Lieutenant Rooney, I don't think I ever spoke a few words. 
But there will be stocks that shine, even in tech, with rates coming down. However, we come out here to find legitimate stars that can thrive regardless of the economy, and they don't do that well in days like today. Many of these outfits are about helping big companies do more with less, and there's always demand for that. They're not bit players. You bring in these guys to bridge the gap to perform better with fewer people. These are stars. To many people, that means one thing, artificial intelligence. Anyone who has the tech to create artificial intelligence is someone who can raise your company's gross margins, boosting earnings, even if it doesn't make more with sales, because sales have been slowing. Hey, you're going to hear from Workday, which has products augmented by AI that can often do the job faster and wiser than people. You'll hear from them soon. We heard the same story from Salesforce last night. But in the end, I am a realist. This is a day for People that need rate cuts, and it's day one. We've got many more rate cuts ahead. Those will create a backdrop of positivity for all stocks. Yes, they will have a positive bias. It's just that with a double-sized rate cut that everybody already expected, you aren't going to see a huge run in tech. It doesn't have the edge when we get the big cuts. Right now, the Fed's helping companies that need a healthy consumer or else, not companies that cater to a OK enterprise. Bottom line, on days like today, where we get a big rate cut, you want to own the stocks of companies that are doing badly, not the ones that are doing well like the ones that we talk to. Almost all the companies that I've talked to out in San Francisco are doing real well. They didn't need the help of the Fed to make their numbers. On days like today, we want the companies that desperately needed a rate cut because they just got what they wished for. But tech, it got out of the wish game a very long time ago. Let's speak to Sonny in Illinois. Sonny. Hey, Jim, it's Sonny from Illinois, your longtime fan and admirer. How you doing, my friend? I, I think this is call number nine for you, Sonny, and I always enjoy you on the show. <laughs> hey, man, I want to give you a big booyah from myself, my wife, Amal, my two sons, Jamil and Zachary. We all love your show, man. Well, thank you, and particularly to the sons who like you, because that's the next generation that's going to watch me. How can I help you now? And hey, man, you know, I always like to give a shout out to New Jersey girl, uh, Nicole, and your staff. They're doing a phenomenal job. The staff is unbelievable. We're out here. I wish I could bring everybody, but I only brought those this Regina Gilgan, I see Dylan Reebok. Wish I could bring everybody, but we've got great staff in New Jersey, too. <laughs> yeah, man. And lastly, I want to give a shout out to your morning show, Carl, and your best friend, David. Well, uh, we, we should shout out my wife, Lisa, my kids, Cece. We had a lot of people to <laughs> shout out. Or we can take a stock and maybe even do that. Let's do that, man. Let's take a stock. I'm thinking about building a position in Walgreens. I know you're a fan of Mr. Tim Wentworth. I am. Do you think Mr. Wentworth can turn this company around and get this stock up the, from okay. nine? The great thing about Walgreens is it can only go down nine points. I know that's a kind of a subtle uh, Hey, listen, it won't go down 10. Stocks stop at zero. I sure hope he pulls it off. But he's got to start spending money on the way that we heard people do things out here, artificial intelligence, be able to cut some of the overhead and bring home more profit. All right, listen, on days like today, when we get a nice big rate cut, we want to be owning the companies that desperately needed that nice big rate cut because they just got what they wished for, not the companies that don't need it. We have money tonight. Do not miss my excuse with some of the tech's top risks. First, I'm digging into the data centers with one of your favorites, AMD, and hearing what its latest acquisition announcement could mean for the chip's powerhouse. Then, I'm looking to Las Vegas as Workday CEO joins me for the software stock's product forward event. Plus, oh boy, another one you love, T-Mobile. They just announced a partnership with OpenAI. So is buying at these levels after the stock cooled up a bit, off a bit? Right call for your portfolio? Hey, I don't know. Let's check in with the CEO. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.